In this first section of modeling, I'll show some basic polygon modeling techniques in 3ds Max for making some different objects. I'll start out by modeling some simple rocks. Rocks are pretty good to have around and be able to model quickly for all manner of outdoor scenes. A quick Google search brings us all kinds of rock reference. As we can see, we have all manner of rocks to choose from. The big deal with rocks is that they're basically large blocks that get rounded over time by mechanical wear and erosion. So we want to start out with a box and only add detail where it's absolutely necessary. The other thing in modeling is we want to have our model look good in silhouette or contour first. Texture is the icing on the cake. Don't rely on texture to save a bad model. In 3ds Max, to start out my boulder, I'll hold control and right click and use the modeling quad, choosing box. I'll land this first box right around 0, 0. Remember that default max units are in inches unless you choose otherwise, so this rock is 5 by 7 by 4 feet roughly. I try to put my objects when I'm modeling around 0, 0. So that way, as I orbit with nothing selected, the object doesn't fly off into space. I also like to work in realistic plus edged faces so I can see my edges for selection and the shading on the object. I'll convert this to an editable poly by right clicking and choosing convert to editable poly. Now I'm ready for modeling. We have really terrific modeling tools here in Max. All manner of things available in the editable poly tool set, even more available in the modifier stack, and really stunning modeling tools up here in the graphite modeling ribbon. What I'll start out with is first actually just moving some sub-objects around. One of the most common things I use in modeling are my hotkeys 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 for vertex, edge, border, polygon, and element. I want to get as much detail in this with as little geometry as possible. I'll start out working with edges. I'll pick a top edge, press W for move, and pull this edge down, deforming the box. I'll do the same on some of the bottoms. My goal here is to make this rock decidedly asymmetric first before I add more geometry. When you're modeling, it's a very good idea to get the maximum mileage out of every piece of geometry before you add more. Don't expect to simply add a couple of thousand faces in and try to sculpt it into the right form. There's the beginning of my rock. Now I'm going to use some of the graphite modeling tools, and there are many of them in here, so I can't go through all of them, but I'll show some that I use quite often. One of the tools I'll use very often in the graphite modeling tool set is the swift loop. This lets me interactively place an edge loop on a model, sliding it back and forth on different edges until I see that it's right. I'll land one here, not on the middle, and this will let me deform this rock again. Now I'll go by edge and pick a top edge and pull it down further, rounding over this rock even more. I want to be careful when I'm modeling to avoid a point. This is not going to read well and is going to shade funny. If I do need to take this down, I'll just do it a little bit to simulate some roundness in there. Once I've got a basic form in, I can start to extrude. I'll hit 4 for polygon and pick one of the side polygons and extrude it out a little bit. In this case, I'll right click. 3ds Max has many modeling tools available on the modeling and creation quad menus. I'll choose from my Tools 2, Extrude. Pick this polygon and extrude it out. Once you add geometry, remember to shape it before you proceed. I'll go back to Edge, hit W for Move, and pick the top edge of this new extrusion, and pull it down again to match my eroded rock form. Also what I'll do is make sure this rock sits on the ground. I'll pick this bottom edge and press S for Snap. I'll hold shift and right click and make sure that my snaps work on vertices but not necessarily on grid points. I'll snap this edge down. This way this rock is flat so I can place it on even terrain. I've got pretty good edge flow going on. This is called an all quads edge flow, meaning that all the objects are four sided. I've got a pretty good edge flow going on. This is an all quads edge flow meaning that all the polygons are four-sided. 
I'll pull out this last one, introducing in just a little bit more of a bevel. So it really starts to have a rock form. I've got a little bit of a smoothing artifact going on I can take out later. What I typically do is model and then come back and deal with hard and soft edges or smoothing and creasing. Now I'm ready to add some beveling for wear. I'll pick some of the edges but not all of them at once. Maybe these three. And I'll right click and choose camphor. Then I'll open up those edges and it gives me a nice round in here. I typically won't round them off, I'll leave them faceted. This will get me a more rock-like form pretty nicely. Now I could come back and split this polygon to retain my all-quad workflow. My general guideline is this, however. I would love it if it stayed in all quads, but if it's not going to wiggle, flap, fly, or generally move around, it's fine. The structure of the editable poly lets you have n-sided polys, and it renders OK. Now for the smoothing. We can see I have a smoothing artifact shown by this diagonal line across that face. If I pick that polygon and scroll down in the editable poly, I can get to the polygon smoothing groups. I'll put that in its own smoothing group, number one. And now it shows up as smooth again. The artifact is gone. Typically what I'll do is pick everything, clear off the smoothing, and for rocks, assign smoothing by poly. We'll put this one in one, this one in two, this one in three, and over here, both of those will be in four, so they look a little more continuous. This one will be in five, and so forth. Another way to handle this is to select them all and auto-smooth with a low angle. Here's 12 degrees as an example. With auto-smoothing on, they all show up pretty well and are all in different smoothing groups. That's a simple rock. This is ready for an unwrap and texture and will look like a rock in the scene. In succeeding lessons, we'll look at terrain, trees, and mechanical objects.